Hi, I'm Rachel Lancaster, and this is the Magnificent Midlife Podcast. This is where we celebrate women in midlife and beyond. We challenge the status quo and bash those negative stereotypes about being an older woman. We're not over the hill at 40, 50, 60. We're just getting started. And the world needs us now more than ever. I'll be talking all things midlife, about the issues that matter, and sharing fabulous stories of amazing women doing very cool stuff. Now's our time. My guest today is Becky Quick, and Becky describes herself as the menopause psychologist. She is dedicated, like me, to helping women cope through menopause, especially with the emotional aspects of the transition. So, Becky, it's lovely to have you here. I feel like I've known you for ages, but we've never actually met. So, welcome. I know it does. Yeah, it's lovely to uh, to finally connect with you. And I know you're doing really powerful work, um, and I'm really keen to explore that and find out all about it. So. Why have you chosen to specialise in helping women in the perimenopause years? Well, it was, it's been a bit of a journey. And actually, only um, I've only been working in this particular area for about two years now. Um, so I'm a clinical psychologist by training and have been working. Well, I worked in the NHS for a good 10 to 15 years, I can't remember losing track of years now and then I left the NHS and set up my own practice so I've always worked with um, children and families and that's what I did in my private practice as well and then when I turned 40 I had one of those wonderful phases of midlife clarity (laughs) and um, kind of um, woke up really to myself which is what I think I think can happen to a lot of women. A lot of my friends, you know, we we would talk about this and it was almost like, oh, having a real look at, at myself and my life and my career. And I realised that I wanted to, to pivot and change my direction of my career and reconnected actually with old, when I say old, you know, kind of passions from my teenage years, which were around women and or back then, oh gosh, I was really full of it and kind of about women empowerment and all this kind of stuff. And then it just kind of, I don't know, kind of went away throughout the years. Anyway, I reconnected with that and felt very charged to support women, I guess, with anxiety and around self-doubt, having realised that actually that was a feature of of me, Um, even though on the outside I looked like I was, you know, running this private practice and I was working as a clinical psychologist, Actually, um, there was a lot of self-doubt and a lot of um, anxiety there. So I did my own kind of work around that, realised I wanted to work to really support women. And at the same time, started to track my menstrual cycle. I just I just happened upon, actually, um, Wild Power, the book by Red School. I don't know if you know about Red School. Oh, oh gosh. yes. So, yes, I do. I've heard yeah, of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're amazing. Alexandra and Sharni. So I, I, I came across their book, Wild Power, and just and read that. That was like my personal, you know, for me personally. And oh, my goodness, it literally just um, it did change my life, that book, because it made me realize that my menstrual cycle was actually an incredible thing rather than something to just kind of get through in terms of my period and and it also made me realize that that all the kind of um different energies that I experience so sometimes I'm very introverted and what I need to be very quiet and very sensory sensitive and other times I'm like you know life and soul of the party and I used to think that was there was something kind of wrong with me um, that I could, you know, and I could swing as well from one, you know, one feeling and one way of looking at things and to another quite easily. But I actually realised it's the menstrual cycle. So I explored that and started to realise that the psychological, the research and the knowledge around psychology actually fitted really beautifully with the menstrual cycle. And that it and the menstrual cycle is almost like a... a, a it can be your own little therapist if you follow it intimately yourself and it can really help to tap you into the self-care 
the sort of areas of self-care that you really need so I was working on that and then realized that actually I was perimenopausal um, and had my own experiences of um, heart palpitations and all sorts of random bits and pieces and had lots of physical investigations realized I was perimenopausal um, and just basically started exploring it and um, I personally was using all of the psychological skills that I'm that I'm trained in using. I was just using them on, with myself. So whenever I'd get a heart palpitation, I would sort of observe them curiously and, and um, was very sort of flexible. We call it psychological flexibility. So I was kind of quite flexible to exp- how I was experiencing my body. Um, so this is all going on in my personal life. And then I realised that actually that these skills that I use because I've been trained to use them would be so helpful for women so I just started dabbling really and and working with some women in this way and then realized (laughs) oh my goodness there's a huge need and that actually you know perimenopause and menopause you know I, I it, it was a new area for me to look into. And so it's just grown from there. And I absolutely lo- love the work. I just love it. It's growing, growing oh, that's quickly. Brilliant. But you were quite early then, weren't you, to be going into perimenopause? And how, how was that for you? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think quite often this can be a bit of a trap, really. And I think women want to sort of know, oh, am I in, I mean, I, you know, I say, oh, and I realise I was in perimenopause, because that's just kind of the words that we use. But it's, um, I think in a way, that's a bit of an issue that we sort of think, oh, I'm in perimenopause, or, or I'm not. And actually, what I say is that from your late 30s, early 40s, well, it's not just what I say, obviously, this is, <laughs> this is a scientific kind of facts, really. But you know our hormones are changing so and 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 so that's that's how it's going to be and I so I know a lot of women experience different levels of fluctuations at different times um and of course we can go through phases where actually our cycle feels really steady and in a flow and then there can be massive fluctuations and then it can settle down again there's no do you know what I mean? I don't feel like it's particularly helpful to go, oh, I'm in perimenopause now. And that's that. Because I've, I've you know, worked with women who definitely have kind of almost come in and out of it being um, a problem. <laughs> On the one hand, I felt quite a lot of grief around having not worked intimately with my menstrual cycle for however many years you know, and only sort of discovering this this incredible wisdom and wild power at the age of 40. But then at the same time, feeling quite relieved that I'd um, come across perimenopause so kind of early on, as it were, really, because a lot of the women I work with, are, are, they're at the late 40s and they are absolutely on their knees and are saying, I wish I'd worked with you. or I wish I'd known all this in my early 40s. So, yeah. Well, you and I, we both want to just raise awareness, don't we, so that women don't have that response. And it's interesting that you talk about the grief of not knowing about this power, yeah. you know, until you were in your early 40s. Well, I, I don't think I ever knew about it until, you know, right now, actually. You've reminded me of that book. Um, I, I've heard yeah. vaguely about Red School, but I never tracked my menstrual cycle. I never connected with that you know inherent female energy that we Mm. have and and that Mm. you know how powerful our hormones are I yeah I just it just happened and I never really thought about it and it's not really since going through my early menopause that I have then begun to try and tap into my body and listen to my body and work out what my body is doing and start paying attention to it you know because before yeah. I was just too busy and I think you know I often say I'm sure it was it was the stress and the fact that I was too busy living this crazy bonkers busy life um that the early menopause happened because you know my body just couldn't cope but yeah. um it's that's very interesting that you know so you so you've caught the tail end of it at least haven't you that that's the nice yeah. aspect of it yeah yeah absolutely and I think that working with the cycle through our 40s you know for women who are still cycling it's it's a way of um preparing 
for menopause itself, whenever that may come. Um, Because you just said there, you know, in terms of tuning into to our bodies, we don't. And I'm, you know, it's interesting to think whether this is going to shift in generations to come. I mean, my 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 daughters know all they're only um, six and eight, but they know all about the menstrual cycle. And I'm very clearly, um, you know, connecting to different energies at different times. I hope that it will shift as time goes on. But also, in a way, you know, we are in the summer of our lives in our sort of 20s and 30s, and we are out there doing things. And I think that's, that's okay as well. And I feel like we, we kind of do, we wake up to ourselves, like I said at the beginning, really, around the sort of turning in 30s into 40s. Um, and then to start tuning in and tracking our bodies, wherever, wherever, whether we've got a menstrual cycle or not, really, is the key yeah yeah there's so much more to uncover i always find about women it's fascinating isn't it we are we're so rich <laughs> we have so yes. much to understand yeah. and explore um, and so much power yeah, well, yeah and and it's innate yeah it's it is, um, isn't it? you know so like red school would say it's coded within us yeah. it's there within us mm. and it's just being able to understand almost crack the code and and tune into it and uh, oh I mean I just absolutely love it the 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 wisdom my cycle especially on uh, um, during my my bleed so they call that the inner winter the wisdom it gives me when I um I am able to really surrender and sink in, into it is phenomenal I get incredible insights really? yeah and so I will I mean this this is all um so I've done um a, a nine month program with Red School around this and so it, I want to obviously <laughs> I've mentioned them a few times but it's it's through that work that I've learned to to do that and we they talk about um you know go and bleed on it so if there's something, you know, like either it's a decision or any something that's kind of troubling you or whatever it might be, let it go. You know, you don't focus on it. You don't think, right, I'm bleeding now. I'm going to think about it. You just let it go. You sink into your bleed and whew, it all rises up. Whatever you need to, whatever you need to know. Well, that's wow. how I experience it. Mm. I've really missed out now. I'm thinking, <laughs> oi, I've missed out. I haven't bled for over 10 years now. What, what do I do? How do I make decisions? <laughs> well, and I guess, I mean, you know, I don't know whether you do track the moon. A, a lot of women who are post-menopause, you know, still talk about a cyclical energy. I don't know if you experience that. You know, it's you're not linear. You're still cyclical. This is something I would really like to explore, actually, because I just don't know. Um, I haven't experienced it personally, but that's probably because I'm too busy again. I'm still not tapping into myself and I certainly don't Mm. follow the moon. But maybe, you know, I suppose I need to, you know, track it and and see what might be happening. So I just don't know. That's the honest answer. But I have heard that we can still be cyclical even, Mm. you know, after menopause. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this isn't my personal experience, but it's from women who I know or have worked with who are postmenopausal, and yeah, that's the they still do feel cyclical energies, um, and it, the moon can be just a really helpful way of organising our ourselves in a way and organising our tapping into different energies um, with the new moon being like the the inner winter the bleed time the time that you can really kind of connect with your wisdom and think about going forward into the next cycle and what you might wish for and and planting those seeds uh, of, of of growth really and then the full moon being almost like ovulation and kind of um you know celebration of ourselves and very much saying yes to who we are and what we're doing and yeah I I I have found since I've been tracking it that I am hugely impacted by the moon wow but I've I mean I again in a way I just kind of was all in you know how I experienced this was was that I was all over the place in my 20s and 30s I probably wasn't I probably was very uh, very much in you know in terms of my menstrual cycle and the moon very much um connected to those energies but i just didn't know it but i have noticed how sensitive i am to those energies 
I mean, sometimes I'm literally bonkers ecstatic at full moon. It's like, wow. it's incredible. It's like a drug. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Wow. So do I yeah. need to go and read this book then? Wild Power? <laughs> Well, I would, you know, we had some women who were on the program um, who last year when I did this, the intense sort of um, deep dive into it with them, who were just, who were postmenopausal. And they actually found it really helpful to understand, look back retrospectively, you know, on their menstrual cycle. It was quite healing for them, you know, so I do think it's, I think it's useful. Mm-hmm. But I know that Alexandra Pope, who's the co-founder of Red School, she's she's in the middle of writing her menopause book. So her, she, her passion is menopause. <clears throat> so, she's post-menopause. So I should get her on the podcast then. Oh, gosh. Oh, 100%. Yeah? She's okay. yeah, very aligned, very aligned with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, about menopause. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> there we go. Got to get her signed up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Brilliant. So why, apart from all this ruddy fluctuating hormone <laughs> malarkey, um, why can our mental health be such an issue during perimenopause? Oh gosh, well, <clears throat> this is a huge, <laughs> this is, it's huge and it's varied and it's multi-layered and it's unique to everyone. That That's the thing. What I think goes underneath it all, in a way, what's the kind of, the foundation or, or, the, or, the, or the thread that weaves through everyone and everything is how we respond to our bodies and to the changes. That kind of almost um, sets the tone in terms of our mental health. Because I could, you know, I could talk in detail about every area of our of our emotional, you know, well-being is impacted, but every area of our physical well-being is as well. Our hormones are so, um, yeah, they are foundational to our whole bodies, aren't they, and our minds. So in a way, I sometimes think, I don't know, I'm in two minds about these kind of symptom checklists. On the one hand, it's really helpful for women to sort of hear anxiety, um, you know, low mood, um, panic, um, loss of, you know, identity, lots of these sort of cycle, and then obviously all the physical symptoms, you know, it's kind of helpful because women are like, okay, that could be to do with, you know, my hormones and perimenopausal. But you could literally list everything in the body and the mind, everything, because <laughs> our hormones impacts everything. So I think why mental health can be such an issue is, is what is it, like I say, how we respond to that. So we'll have hormones fluctuating and we were you know whatever that might be for each individual and it's then what do we perceive of those changes you know and if we think oh my god you know whatever oh my god that means you know even the word um perimenopause and menopause can it can kind of bring about a sense of fear and anxiety and it's those it's those responses to our bodies that i think sort of changes how we our emotional kind of journey through this and and also our willingness or not to experience the changes that we are having so if we are fighting against our our body's experiences then um, we're going to get caught in traps so it's just going to feed into the kind of threat system that we that we have Whereas if we if we respond to um, the whole kind of idea and journey, well, not the idea that it's not an idea, obviously, it's a factual journey, you know, through our 40s and 50s, if we respond to it in a kind of, OK, I'm going through this. I don't want to I don't want to fix it. I don't want to bypass it. I'm actually going to go through this. If we have that kind of response to our bodies and if we can respond to the actual um physiological sensations with curiosity um then then we're at a place where um you know our mental health isn't impacted so much I don't know if that, does that make sense yeah completely and i am i i see that completely but i also think um that there is so much that society brings to how we respond because we see as a society so much of our value wrapped up in our fertility and our beauty and and we are taught 
that aging is bad. We are, you know, we're not taught anything about menopause, but we fear it like the plague. You know, we don't want to be mutton. We don't want to be older. Um, and that all impacts everything as well. And I think I like to say, yeah, that we've, we've been working with our wombs all our lives and menopause is not the time to start fighting them. It's exactly what you were saying is that yeah. accept it, be curious, mm. um, experience it. I mean, I actually, you know, once I got over the, oh my God, I'm a shriveled up old prune narrative <laughs> that I had initially with the early menopause, once I managed to think, okay, well, I need to experience this because I'm not a different person. I'm no less than I was. Um, then I was more able to cope with it. But anxiety does still seem to be very prevalent, doesn't it? Even, even yeah. if, you know, for example, me, you know, I think I'm pretty good about menopause and perimenopause now, but I can see that, you know, anxiety has been an issue. But whether that's just the stage of life I'm at or specifically menopause, I don't know whether it's hormone related or not. It's really mm. difficult to know, isn't it, sometimes because there's yeah. so much going on. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I mean, the, the biologically, the threat system is dialed up in, in perimenopause. That's that is what happens it's it's um it's related to the amygdala to the sort of threat system in our brain and so we are more in um in threat mode that's kind of a well many of us are that's kind of like a biological fact and this is where i get to thank you because i'm gonna i'll i'll, I'll link this in but um it was your podcast with oh who's the lady that wrote flash count diary darcy thank you yes I oh I've just gone all shivery. I, I mean I can even remember where she I gave was. me shivers. In... She, well, she made me cry. Oh, she made me gosh. cry in that podcast. Incredible. Well, I listened to that podcast. Um, I was in Tatton Park because I'm, I'm um, I was living in Nutsville at the time, and I was just absolutely blown away listening to that and the 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 story of the the fact that the that whales are the only other mammal or animal that go through menopause. Um, I then really um, explored that and thought a lot about that um, and looked into it. just thought it was incredible. I guess that is the sort of psychologist and, and sort of anthropologist in me. Because I then thought, well, if, if the hormonal changes at this time really dial up the threat system, which they do, anxiety is one of the most uh, pro, you know, prevalent kind of issues with women. And a lot of women who haven't experienced anxiety before, they're suddenly, you know, feeling overwhelmed by anxiety. Um, what does that mean evolutionary wise? And so when we look at, as a psychologist, whenever something means that the threat system's dialed up, it's, you kind of look at that and think, okay, so why, why? Because obviously, we, therefore, we need to keep ourselves safe. And if you look at the other initiations of, of a female, the initiatory journey of menarche, starting our periods, and so adolescence, that the threat system's dialed up then, because of course, and I'm talking very evolutionary wise here, but you know, girls uh, then become able, <laughs> God forbid, not that young age, but they become able to reproduce. So mm -hmm. as a species, we'd need that to, to, to take place. So they become very precious and so, the threat system's dialed up to keep them safe, for them to keep themselves safe. Same happens at the second massive initiation for women, which uh, for, for some women who go through um, motherhood, so prenatally and then postnatally, threat system is dialed up, and become very, very aware of, of a threat because, of course, we're keeping the young, you know, safe. So it happens again at menopause. Why the heck's that? And I guess I've, you know, this is how, how I see it, which is the, oh God, we need to call it something else, that grandmother hypothesis. But um, the hypothesis that we are precious at this time of life. Women are a precious jewel in society, in the ongoing, um, the ongoing kind of species, you know, development of our species. And if, and so like the whales, 
I'll just re- repeat the kind of the for those who who oh well I, I just say go back and listen to that <laughs> podcast of yours but but it's it's that the female whales they all go through menopause and then they become the leader of the pod and that ensures that their you know their species continues because they show them the the you know with their wisdom of the many years of understanding the seas where to go when it's for the you know the best time for food and warmth all those kind of things they basically mean that the pods survive you know survive so they are really important in in the whale society and so i mean i just think biologically there's something going on for us as well you know humans need women post-menopause I believe that. Otherwise, we're hell, screwed. I'm, I'm going to shout that from yeah. the rooftops. Yeah. You know me. I mean, that absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That that is absolutely yeah. my message. Yeah. How yeah. I like that. Ooh. So the threat, in a way, and that's what's really tricky because sometimes, you know, um, I'll like, for example, I saw the other day. I mean, this is so common. Um, I saw something on Instagram about um, driving anxiety. Someone's talking about that because that because that's quite a big a big difficulty for a lot of women who suddenly become very anxious of driving and going on the motorways and blah, 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 blah. And a man, you know, anything really, any area of our lives, a lot of women become very focused on or very anxious around their health and around um, death and and their mortality and all these kind of pockets of, of, of anxiety. And in a way I kind of think, well, well, yeah, well, you we know? have to survive, don't we? It makes we? sense. We have yeah, to survive it, in this yeah. new iteration. Yeah, yeah. So it, it makes sense to be sort of, uh, to be, <laughs> in a way, to be thinking, actually, you know, driving down the motorway, you know, in, in, a, in a tin can <laughs> is, is not, you know, it, it kind of makes sense that the threat system is dialed up. Of course, it's about then, you know, understanding that, because we have got ancient evolved bodies in a ridiculously developed modern world. So I, I don't know whether, you know, you would, you know, have thought about this or I'm, I'm presuming you'd agree, but we, we're not fit for purpose, men and women. So our, our human bodies are not, do not suit this modern world because evolutionary wise, it takes thousands, thousands, thousands of years for, for us to changes to take place. Yeah. Whereas... The modern world's just gone crazy, hasn't it? So I always wonder why why we still have so many teeth. You know, why why do we, why do most of us need braces to not look like a graveyard? You know, surely we would have evolved by now to have less teeth. I'm not just sure my that's you know, really funny. Ran, random fact there. That I've always wondered that. It's like, why do we still have so many teeth? Yeah, yeah. Well, there are a few things we don't we don't need anymore. But yeah. Yeah. Um, menstrual cycles is not one of those, though. We do need those, don't we? And so it's, yeah, it's we it's about and I guess this is where my work comes in, really. It's about helping women live, you know, through the menopause in this bonkers, crazy modern world in a way that is taking them towards their own fulfillment. You know, so in terms of driving, for example, you know, if it's about knowing what 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 is kind of driving us well I didn't, I didn't actually mean that that's a, a bit of a pun but what you know it, it's important for us to go to wherever it's going to be and so therefore we have to take our anxiety with us so that's the psychological skill rather than oh my you know I'm feeling anxious and it does obviously feel very it feels awful discomfort and the physiological sensations if we try and get rid of it and push it away and tell ourselves we're ridiculous for being anxious, we've been driving for 20 years, why, you know, beat ourselves up, then that's going to feed into obviously more fear. Whereas actually if we go, do you know, well, it kind of makes sense that I'm, you know, more more anxious about this. I'm going to take my anxiety with me. It's what I always talk to women about. Sling it in your backpack. And I don't mean literally, but whatever it is, we take, you take the anxiety with you. And then that releases us from the trap and it releases us from a lot of the discomfort, actually, if we can learn how to be willing to feel some of the anxiety. Paradoxically, we then don't feel as bad. <laughs> but that's like with many emotions, isn't it? If we, if yeah. we allow ourselves to feel it and to identi- well, identify it, feel it, don't fight it, because the more you fight it, the worse it gets, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And it sounds so simple, doesn't it? Um, but in a way, that's that is the bread and butter. What you've just described there is the bread and butter of the work I do. And it's and and it there are there are some really wonderful psychological processes and approaches to help us to be able to do that. Um, but also what's really, really important is is how we connect with our true selves. So how in a way in perimenopause, we kind of I sort of see that women in terms of like psychologically turn back towards themselves and kind of almost look at themselves and like, oh, my goodness. Whereas before we've been out there doing all the things out out there. Now we're starting to look in here. And um, a big part of the work I do is to help women to reconnect. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm here. You can see me visually. I'm like you reconnect with our with our true essence and um and who we truly are and then face outwards from that position and then the psychological skills that i teach flow so easily if we really really um like i say connect with our souls and our and our and our spirits in that in that way well darcy steinke talks as well about the lifting of the estrogen veil you know that yeah. when that is yeah. lifted <laughs> And we are not so governed by that and by our cycles that we can reconnect with a more authentic version of ourselves. Yeah. And yeah. maybe even going back to pre-puberty times, you know, yeah. when, when suddenly everything, everything changed when we went through puberty. And a lot of women talk about that. Jo Mosley has been on my podcast. She talks about, you know, feeling like she felt before puberty, actually, you know, yeah. ha having the kind of personality and outlook on yeah. life. <laughs> that she had pre-puberty and, and if that was good which i think for most of us it was hopefully if that was good then then that's a good thing isn't it that we we get yeah, a chance yeah. to reconnect with our most authentic original self yeah yeah absolutely i mean when you're talking there i've got, I've got lots of thoughts sort of pinging off of, about that because um it's yeah the veils are lifted I mean I smiled when you said that because I you know fully embrace that I bloody love it I love it women really kind of connect with the reality of how things are you know none of this kind of estrogen or almost is like the summer sun makes everything all nice and lovely and it's almost like the veils like you say are lifted it's like oh my god you know but I love it but of course that can cause a lot of distress because it's it's a lot to deal with, really, mm -hmm. to have those veils lifted and to have those feelings of um, quite often anger and frustration. I have a lot of women. I mean, oh, gosh. I mean, when they say this, I, 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 I love it because I just know that we can channel this in an amazing way. But they will say to me, I'm so scared of unleashing this anger and so because they're putting a lid on it and I'm like oh, oh come on because it isn't about throwing the anger here there and everywhere it's about really holding on to it allowing that emotion to kind of fertilize in a, in a way holding it in and then choosing with conscious decision where to focus that and that is the stuff that can you know that can change the world quite honestly i agree because the flip side of anger is passion yeah. isn't it yeah. yeah yeah and if we can see the anger as not as something bad but as something good that we as you say we can channel into something that we can make our passion that absolutely mm. midlife women can yeah. change the world and, and in a way, we get an experience of this every single menstrual cycle. For those women who do have some cycles, we get a dose of this every single cycle in our inner autumn, which is our premenstrual pre phase, because that is when estrogen declines in the cycle. And that is, you know, a time that a lot, you know, lots of women say they struggle, but I guess they're struggling with the fact that, yeah, the veils are lifted momentarily. And, and it's not that stuff rises up that hasn't, been there before it's just that we're aware of of it stuff that actually whatever it might be it might be frustrations but it also might be 
traumas that need healing. It could be all sorts of stuff. There's stuff that's underneath kind of you become aware of it. Um, and that's what I wanted to say, just, just to touch on before we go on to the next point, just in terms of the veils are lifted. Um, this is a huge issue in perimenopause and menopause that earlier, well, at any point in life, any kind of unresolved trauma in whatever shape or form that may be or um, losses that have not been fully grieved or, or that, that, you know, anything like that, um, this time kind of calls us to to tend to those wounds and I know that a lot of women you know that causes a lot of distress um but in a way knowing that I mean I I again think it's beautiful but of course I'm in a privileged position of, of being a therapist and knowing you know the kind of the approaches that we can use to help ourselves to heal and actually gather the gifts from that healing so I you know so I appreciate that a lot, you know, a lot of women aren't yet aware of that, but that's part of my my work really to say that this is the time. Because what I have noticed in working with women, and this is why I absolutely love it. I mean, the the in a way, the the, the healing and the therapeutic, the kind of inner growth, the emotional growth that can take place in the women who are at this stage who are kind of cracked open by these hormonal changes is phenomenal and it can go at a rate of knots i've not some of the women i've worked with i just cannot believe how quickly in a way they can and i don't mean there's no rushing about it but they just boom they connect with some really deep core parts of themselves because like i like we said the veils are lifted and we're cracked open they connect with it and then you know then with the work and the psychological skills i teach they can really just fly and then that's where I see women you know doing all the work in the world that, that we need them to do so it's 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 amazing it's incredible the the development that can take place I know I really do see it as a gift having you know even the early menopause for me which you know was devastating at the time mm. um and now see it as a gift and uh, yeah. certainly now in my 50s it's just I am so excited about this time in, in life and um, mm. and everything about it. And I'm, as you say, I'm, I'm different now. I'm a different person. You know, I'm not who I was before, but I'm not less. Mm. I'm, mm. I'm different. I'm evolving. I'm becoming, you yeah. know, I think a more authentic version of me. Yeah. And I also yeah. say that, you know, the end of my fertility actually became the most fertile time of my life. Oh, I like that. It's a good one. Yeah, I do like that. <laughs> yeah. And what I also like what you said there is that this kind of evolution and that you are a different person now, because a lot of women will, will come to me and say, oh, I, I, I want to get back to being my, you know, my old self. I don't feel like I'm who I used to be. I don't recognize myself anymore. And I want to get back to that. And, and I, you know, will gently, you know, have a a discussion and develop a narrative around actually it's about evolving forward mm. not kind of going back to that mm. I, I understand that when things are wobbly we do want to cling back to what we knew mm. um I, I i get it and it's and it's okay to feel like that but it's about actually pivoting and like you said evolving forward into this new phase but but it does require some level of support mm. and um awareness mm. otherwise it can feel very daunting I think. and it's scary i don't think there's mm. any doubt it's scary and i think for a lot of women for whom like youth and beauty was a big part of who they were or society's mm. view of beauty mm. or fertility then because we have been programmed to see menopause just as a time of loss whereas I don't see it like that anymore. I did when it started, but I do not see it like that anymore. And for me, I always say, you know, I, w I was, I'm very happy with the way I'm aging physically. I don't, I don't have a problem with wrinkles and, and, and age spots or anything else. I'm, I'm very happy with it. They're, they're like my honor stripes. I've earned them, you know? Yeah. And, sure. My body is changing, but I'm okay with that too. So I think it's how much you're able to embrace this transition rather mm. than, as you say, clinging on 
to what came before because mm. that's what we've known for so long. But if we had more of a tradition of like the whales, having the older women guiding the younger women yeah. and, and guide, because that's another reason why the whales go through menopause is because the older whales are then not in competition with their yes. daughters or their granddaughters for the for the um for the male whale's attention yeah. so that's another yeah. reason for, for doing it you know because that yeah. is good for the species and good for the development mm. of the species mm. as well as just continuing it so i think if we can get back to more having that kind of idea of older women guiding younger women but we seem to have lost that don't mm. we that we don't really have that so much i don't think anymore which is a shame no. But also, just when you're talking now, it's making me think about um, sexuality, actually. And, you know, because you just said in terms of the whales, they become, they're become they not in competition with the younger, you know, um, whales. <laughs> and if you think about that in human ways, and, and I know of lots of women, um, their sexuality and their sensuality and, and that kind of area, it feels like there's a huge shift. But when you were talking then, I was just thinking, well... It's uh, it has the potential to be again. I know it's just sound like me very kind of positive, but I truly believe this. So beautiful and powerful because our sexuality, and whether that's with a partner or not or with ourselves, I believe becomes more of a journey of deep connection yes. with ourselves yes. and yes with our partner. But uh, you know, it's it's about that, and I've gone all shivery and exploration. Uh, it's yes yeah not to reproduce and i always say you know sex doesn't have to be penis in vagina if it's heterosexual sex you know Absolutely. there's all sorts oh, yeah. of other yeah. ways oh, yeah. to explore yeah. and and yeah to have yeah. lots of fun and i think because we think it's got to be the reproductive type mm, that, that exactly. a lot for a lot of people that's what sex means isn't it yeah. but there is so yeah. you know there's a smorgasbord to enjoy yeah we, oh well and there needs to be a whole shift around that because again because women are kind of almost cracked open and in this different hormonal state um that the, the, there's the potential to have um incredible um experiences of the whole body like you say it's not about penis and vagina it's about the whole the whole enjoyment of the whole body and it's um you know in terms of tantra tantra and then kind of connecting with the full energetic and sharing that energy with someone else or with yourself yeah it, it, it's phenomenal but it's different and we don't know we don't talk about this no. you know i mean this is this is kind of a new area for me to be understanding and exploring and i'm reading up and i'm listening and i'm talking to people There's and I'm experiencing <laughs> yeah Oh, is it's a there? midlife sex podcast. Oh, yeah. Magnificent oh, midlife, midlife sex podcast. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it's it. But it's an important part of our of our mental health, actually, um, you know, and who we who we are and connecting with. Uh, yeah, with our power. Yeah, I actually it's very exciting sort of talking about all of this with you because it. it yeah, there is. I think we do need to rebrand menopause and get away from this feeling of loss and see it much more as as a transition, as a transformation, as a positive. Mm. It is, it is. But let me just, just put in there that it is, well, I believe anyway, that it's this it's transformation. But in a way, we do need to connect with the loss of something to allow the beginning of something. Yes, I agree. I, there is that that stage uh, in terms of init an, an, an initiation. Um, there has to be an ending for the beginning. So it is, and, and again, that's a lot of the work I do with women to kind of really process um, the the losses because other losses rise up at this time. And it, and oh, it's 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 amazing actually. I mean. I um I think there's that's where it's at actually I think we can really pick up so so much treasure when we do actually go into the loss and then we move through and that does create the fertile soil for the sp the spring and the new beginnings so yeah it's um it's yeah it's a wonderful phase potential has the potential and you're right we need to take the time to do that work mm. it's like any stage in life isn't it we need to mark it 
we need to yeah. commemorate it we need to explore it and discover yeah. what yeah. is there and yeah. as you say deal with the unresolved issues because they yeah. come and shake their fingers at us in midlife yeah. they really do they do they do and you know and if we don't kind of tend to them in some way and it doesn't need to and sometimes it might be in-depth kind of therapeutic work but actually more often than not it's it's not it doesn't have to be a big piece of work therapeutic work it can be acknowledging you know acknowledging those those whatever it might be um to then almost yeah release release them to a certain extent and then um kind of moving forward but it's funny you're saying about not um kind of uh, I can't remember the words you just said but in terms of acknowledging it because I was actually thinking this afternoon I was thinking about menopause and ceremonies and you know to kind of um I know some people do have menopause parties as it were I wouldn't I wouldn't like to use the word party but that's just me I love the idea of some kind of ceremony I've become quite I've started to use ceremony quite a lot in my life if for something. I mean, I will do, we've talked about the moons already, the moon and, but other things, you know, something significant's happening or what have you, just a ritual and a ceremony. Mm. Just thought, oh yeah, we could do with a bit more of that. Well, it's tapping into that female energy, isn't it? And that female power. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So will you be having, will you be having your menopause ceremony at some stage? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's it, it's. Um, I mean, who knows when it will be? But um, yeah, I, I, oh, for sure, yeah. But I mean, it'd be interesting to see where the world is then. Really, I mean, who knows when it'll be? I think for my my mum was around the age of fifty. Um, so yeah, I've got quite a long way until then. But it's about. I mean, I just look. I, I, I work with women generally in their forties and probably the first half of their fifties. So, of course, some women, I feel like we're, we're at a similar um, hormonal stage, but I guess I'm, you know, can guide them with with my psychology. Other women are older than me and I'm guiding them with my psychological knowledge. But I'm also it's very reciprocal. You know, I'm also hearing from them. And if I'm helping them to tap into their wisdom, I then um, soak that up. And it's it, it's really lovely. It's a it's so different from how I used to um, be as a therapist. It's much more connected and reciprocal. I, I love it. I really do. Um, so, yeah, I'll be seeing how women kind of transition themselves. And then, um, yeah, we'll see where it goes for me. And what's your best advice for getting out of the sort of clutches of anxiety if we're really sort of really stuck feeling very anxious because now we've got COVID and we've got yeah. everything else going on and it's all a bit... Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my my advice, I guess, would be it is that turning towards it. I actually have this process that that I help women to go through when the anxiety really overwhelms us, you know, in those, those moments of absolute overwhelm. And it's the now process. So the first, the N, is the noticing it. I mean, that's the key. If, if we can actually notice whatever it might be, wherever you're feeling it, feeling in the body, because we all feel it in different places, but noticing it and then... The, the trick is to actually tune into it and, and people first think what's she on about but but feel it more really concentrate on where it is in your body so if your stomach is churning or if you your heart is racing or if you're feeling dizzy what or your hands are tingling whatever it might be that that whatever sensation it phys, physical sensation really really pay attention and concentrate on it because the discomfort of anxiety isn't actually the initial anxiety it's the struggle of us trying to get rid of it that's the discomfort um, science has showed us so actually if we notice and turn towards it and I know this is this is hard and it feels counterintuitive because as human beings, we've learned to kind of, um, when something's not nice, we just, we get rid of it, you know, we problem solve it or whatever it might be. 
And this is kind of the opposite um, because we can't, we need to treat, (laughs) we need to respond to emotions differently. But yeah, turn towards it, notice it, concentrate on it. Then you're not having that struggle of trying to get rid of it. That then dissipates the, the intensity of it. So that's the noticing, that's the end. Then the next stage is opening up our senses. And that's a a way of grounding us in the moment. So once you've kind of noticed where it is and concentrated, then concentrated on it, then really grounding yourself by opening up your senses. Um, And that can be, you know, smell, obviously sight, touch, whatever it might be. I do find that smell, if you haven't had COVID, and this is, you know, an issue, people lose sense of smell, but smell can really ground you in the here and now or touch. So kind of really pressing your feet into the ground. And I like to imagine that the roots are growing beneath you into the ground, just really um, opening up the senses. And then the W is wrap yourself up in self-compassion. Wrap yourself in a, in a blanket of, of self-compassion. And there are ways of doing that. And I have a free guide, actually. We could put this in the show notes in terms of I've got a guide to take you through that process of exactly what to do for the N or for the O and for the W. It can really change your response to anxiety. And the more you do that, the more the body learns to not feel threatened by threat, by anxiety doesn't mean you're never going to experience anxiety because that would be really weird but it means that you're okay with feeling anxious thank you for listening to this episode of the magnificent midlife podcast if you enjoyed it please subscribe share it and leave me a review wherever you're listening it really helps me get the message out you can find out more information about this episode in the show notes at magnificentmidlife.com that's also where you'll find strategies support and resources to help make your midlife magnificent get clarity on how to make the most of your next chapter help me change the world one magnificent midlife woman at a time.